In the annals of human history, there are battles that echo through eternity, searing the very soul of mankind. Among them, there is one that stands as an epitaph of human sacrifice, courage, and indomitable will. A city once known for its industrial prowess and rich heritage became the crucible of an apocalyptic struggle. Millions of German and Soviet troops collided in a dance of death, their destinies intertwined in an unforgiving symphony of war. The stakes were unimaginably high. Hundreds of thousands of German soldiers found themselves trapped, besieged by an unyielding Red Army. Yet the Soviets were bound by an iron decree, a chilling not-one-step-back order, leaving them with no choice but to fight until death. Amidst the icy grasp of winter, amid the crumbling ruins of a once-proud city, a war of attrition unfolded, consuming the very essence of humanity. This battle was not just fought with weapons and tactics, it was a fight for survival, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. Hand to hand, street by street, every inch of ground was paid for in blood. Heroes were born, legends forged, and sacrifices beyond measure offered on this hallowed ground by both sides, Soviet and German. Welcome, my friends, to the bloodiest clash ever witnessed, the Battle of Stalingrad. Welcome to Stalingrad. You're about to begin the greatest moment of your life. The Germans have lost hundreds of tanks and planes. Cast not to let the enemy reach the Volga and to defend the city of Stalingrad. Our objective is Stalingrad. We will have the city in days. They won't know what's coming. Remember before we embark on the tractor factory, no prisoners. Not one step back! Do not count miles! Count only the number of Germans you have killed! Kill the German! This is your mother's prayer! Kill the German! This is the cry of your Russian class! Do not waver! In the summer of 1942, the German war machine turned its sights towards Stalingrad, a strategic city on the banks of the Volga River. Having conquered vast territories, the Germans were confident, their spirits high as they approached their next target. The Luftwaffe unleashed a relentless aerial assault, raining bombs upon the city, reducing Stalingrad to a haunting landscape of ruins. The once thriving metropolis was now a ghost town. As the dust settled, German soldiers marched through the battered streets with an air of triumph. The city's strategic importance was undeniable, and the Wehrmacht held high hopes of a swift victory. The German command believed that the Soviet resistance would crumble, and the city would fall into their hands without much resistance. Propaganda leaflets were disseminated, promising a new order under German occupation. But unbeknownst to them, what lay ahead was an unforeseen chapter of warfare. As the battle for Stalingrad intensified, Paulus's insistence on using more firepower to break the Soviet defenses had unintended consequences for the German forces. The shift towards heavy airstrikes and artillery bombardments resulted in significant casualties among the Soviet defenders, weakening their positions in some areas. However, this approach also exacerbated the challenges faced by the German tanks on the ground. With the city reduced to rubble from the relentless bombardments, the battle for Stalingrad became a grueling street-by-street -street and house-by-house -house fight. The once clear streets were now impassable due to the debris, making it challenging for German tanks to maneuver effectively. The Soviet forces capitalized on this opportunity and devised tactics to trap the German infantry behind the tanks. This strategic move isolated the soldiers and exposed them to the perilous threat of Soviet snipers and guerrilla fighters. The use of heavy firepower also placed a significant strain on the already overstretched German supply lines. Constantly needing to refuel and rearm the 6th Army for continuous attacks became increasingly difficult, as the logistics infrastructure struggled to cope with the demands of a prolonged urban battle. In contrast, the Soviets, with their ability to draw upon vast reserves and having the advantage of defending their own territory, could sustain the prolonged conflict better. Stalin, recognizing the symbolic significance of Stalingrad and the potential for a morale-boosting victory issued Order No. 227 in October 1942. The order strictly forbade any retreat or surrender, imposing harsh penalties on those who disobeyed, including execution. This directive signaled to both the Soviet military and civilians that they were to hold their ground at all costs, further bolstering their determination to defend the city. 
The relentless resolve of the Soviet troops, combined with the harsh consequences for failure, made the battle even more grueling for the Germans. In summary, Paulus's strategy of relying on more firepower might have initially caused significant casualties to the Soviet defenders. But it also created a more challenging battlefield for the German tanks and infantry. Combined with the strain on their supply lines, this played a role in tipping the scales in favor of the Soviet forces. Additionally, Stalin's unwavering order to defend Stalingrad at all costs further intensified the determination of the Soviet troops, making their resistance even more tenacious. Ultimately, these factors contributed to the eventual turning point of the battle in favor of the Soviets and marked a significant setback for the Germans on the Eastern Front. During the battle, a series of infamous locations became the epicenter of intense fighting as both German and Soviet forces sought to gain control over critical strategic points within the city. Among these pivotal locations were the Red October Factory, the Barricades Factory, and the formidable Mamayev Kurgan Hill. These sites would forever be etched in the annals of history as the battlegrounds that shaped the outcome of this prolonged and brutal conflict. The Red October Factory, a crucial hub for producing steel and armor to bolster the Soviet war effort, became a prime target for the German forces. Its large, heavily fortified buildings provided an ideal stronghold for the determined Soviet troops who fiercely defended the site. The Germans launched a relentless series of brutal assaults, leading to close-quarter combat and untold suffering on both sides. Despite the ferocity of the attacks, the Red October factory defiantly remained in Soviet hands throughout the grueling battle. Situated in the northern part of Stalingrad, the Barricades factory held significant industrial importance, with the Germans recognizing its potential to control vital transportation and communication routes. The battle for this vital complex was a cauldron of violence, resulting in heavy casualties on both sides. The Soviet defenders displayed unwavering resolve, presenting the Germans with formidable challenges in their quest for victory. In the end, the Barricades factory defiantly remained under Soviet control, becoming a symbol of the indomitable spirit of the defenders. Mamayev Kurgan Hill, towering above Stalingrad, held profound symbolism for both warring factions. Offering a strategic vantage point, it became a fiercely contested prize throughout the duration of the battle. The Germans managed to secure the hill early on, but the Soviets launched relentless counterattacks, determined to reclaim the elevated ground. The fighting for Mamayev Kurgan descended into some of the most ferocious and brutal encounters of the entire conflict. The hill changed hands multiple times in a relentless struggle for dominance. Finally, on February 2, 1943, the Soviets achieved a decisive victory, marking a critical turning point in the battle. Beyond these three infamous locations, Stalingrad's tractor factory and grain elevator also witnessed intense and prolonged fighting. The tractor factory, located in the city's northern part, was a site of heavy combat, eventually falling to the German forces. However, the relentless Soviet spirit was evident, as they launched continuous counterattacks in a bid to reclaim the factory from enemy hands. The grain elevator, providing a strategic viewpoint of the city, emerged as another crucial battleground. The Germans initially captured it, but their hold was met with fierce resistance from the Soviets, who made persistent attempts to regain control. The fight for the grain elevator was marked by extraordinary brutality, leading to heavy losses on both sides. In a seesaw battle, the elevator changed hands multiple times before the Soviets ultimately emerged triumphant. I don't think many people really realize how bad and brutal the fighting in Stalingrad was. It saw some of the most brutal combat in recorded history. Hand-to-hand -hand combat became a grim reality for the soldiers fighting for their respective houses. Each day brought relentless fighting, with both sides locked in a deadly struggle for control of these strategic urban strongholds. But, heartbreakingly, all the hard-fought gains could be lost overnight. As dawn broke, the soldiers would rise to find the city transformed into a deadly maze of destruction and rubble. The buildings that once provided cover and tactical advantages were now reduced to mere ruins, offering no respite from the ceaseless warfare. These streets, once bustling with civilian life, had turned into a nightmarish death trap where survival was the ultimate test. For the German soldiers, the challenges were immense. The narrow streets of Stalingrad limited their movements and made them easy targets for the well-prepared Soviet defenders. Each step forward was met with fierce resistance 
and even when they gained ground during the day, they had to face the haunting reality of losing it all as night fell. The Soviet soldiers, familiar with the terrain and possessing a deep understanding of the city's layout, used every advantage to thwart the German advances. They outnumbered the Germans. The battle was beyond relentless. The combat in the streets of Stalingrad was brutal and up close. The soldiers found themselves engaged in deadly close quarters combat, where bayonets, grenades, and submachine guns were their lifelines. The chaos and confusion made it nearly impossible to maintain a cohesive front line. Each corner turned could be met with an enemy ambush, and the fear of snipers hiding in the shadows haunted every step. The toll on the soldiers' mental and physical health was devastating. The constant danger, the loss of comrades, and the unrelenting pressure caused severe psychological stress and exhaustion. Yet, they fought on, driven by the instinct to survive and protect their comrades. Here is a letter from Ernst Willium. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the darkness settled over Stalingrad like a suffocating shroud. We, the German soldiers, braced ourselves for another night of terror and uncertainty in this ravaged city. The nights were the cruelest, and as I clutched my rifle tighter, I knew there would be no rest for us. In the blackness, even the familiar streets felt alien and treacherous. The echoes of gunfire and distant explosions served as a haunting soundtrack to this nightmarish theater of war. We moved cautiously, knowing that each step could be our last, unsure if our next encounter would be with an enemy or a fellow comrade. As the darkness deepened, we relied on our senses to survive. Our ears strained to catch the faintest of sounds, the shuffle of boots, the rustle of debris, the suppressed cough of an enemy lurking nearby. Each rustle in the distance sent shivers down my spine, and my heart raced with adrenaline, ready to respond to any threat that materialized. The night seemed never-ending, and the darkness became an oppressive force, weighing on our spirits. Yet we persevered, clinging to the hope that we would see the dawn, and live to tell the tale of these brutal nights in Stalingrad. As August 23, 1942 dawned, the German forces were on the verge of completing their operation to capture Stalingrad. General Gustav von Wietersheim's 14th Panzer Corps had made significant progress, penetrating the city's suburbs and pushing further toward the heart of the Volga. The German advance was relentless, and it seemed as though victory was within their grasp. On that fateful day, the German troops continued their advance, and by nightfall, they had reached the western bank of the mighty Volga. The river, which was once the lifeblood of Stalingrad, now stood as a formidable natural barrier, separating the opposing forces. The sight of the river emboldened the German soldiers, as they believed that the end of the battle was near. However, they were unaware of the tenacious resolve of the Soviet forces under General Vasily Chuikov. As the German troops stood on the western bank of the Volga, the Soviets were being pushed back into an increasingly constricted area along the river. Within a month of the intense fighting, Chikov's forces found themselves squeezed into a mere 9 by 3 mile strip of land along the Volga's embankment. This shrinking enclave became a desperate last stand for the Soviet defenders. The battle devolved into a nightmarish scene of carnage, where the streets of Stalingrad turned into a deadly maze of rubble and ruin. Both sides engaged in relentless close-quarter combat as bayonets clashed, grenades exploded, and submachine guns roared amidst the deafening chaos. The German troops were met with fierce resistance at every step as the Soviets clung tenaciously to their positions. Each building, each street corner, became a fiercely contested battleground. The urban landscape offered cover and concealment to both defenders and attackers, turning Stalingrad into a death trap. November 19, 1942, dawned. The German forces in Stalingrad had little inkling that the tide of World War II was about to take a catastrophic turn. General Georgi Zhukov launched Operation Uranus, a massive Soviet counteroffensive that would prove to be one of the most significant turning points in the war. Unbeknownst to the Germans, this operation would herald their worst nightmare. Zhukov's strategy was cunning and audacious. Instead of launching a frontal assault on the well-entrenched and battle-hardened 6th Army and 4th Panzer Army within the confines of Stalingrad, the Soviets struck at the flanks of the overextended Axis line. The under-equipped Romanian troops tasked with defending the lines to the north and south of the city were ill-prepared to withstand the full might of the Red Army's advance. Their valiant efforts could do little more than delay the relentless march of the Soviet forces. Meanwhile, 
the Germans found themselves in a dire predicament. The stretched front line and the scarcity of mobile reserves made it nearly impossible for them to effectively respond to the impending encirclement. The Red Army's rapid advance left the Axis forces scrambling to consolidate their defenses, but it was a futile effort against the tide of the Soviet onslaught. As the encirclement tightened its grip, the situation in Stalingrad became increasingly desperate. The German forces trapped within the city were cut off from their supply lines, and the prospect of relief was slim. The harsh winter weather compounded their woes, as they endured freezing temperatures, dwindling food supplies, and a lack of warm clothing. The Axis powers had underestimated the resilience and strategic acumen of the Soviet forces. Operation Uranus demonstrated the Red Army's ability to adapt and execute a masterful offensive, proving their mettle as a formidable opponent. The encirclement at Stalingrad became a disaster of monumental proportions for the German High Command. What they hoped would be a decisive victory had turned into a catastrophic defeat. The Sixth Army, once considered an invincible force, now faced annihilation within the confines of the city they had hoped to conquer. The impact of Operation Uranus on Germany's war effort was profound. The encirclement at Stalingrad not only dealt a severe blow to their military capabilities, but also shattered the morale of the German troops. The fall of Stalingrad would mark the beginning of a series of devastating defeats for the German forces in the Eastern Front. On December 12, 1942, Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, one of Germany's most skilled military commanders, initiated Operation Winterstorm in a desperate bid to break the encirclement of the 6th Army at Stalingrad from the southwest. This operation was seen as the last hope to relieve the besieged German forces in the city. However, despite its initial promise, the attempt ultimately failed, leading to a catastrophic outcome for the German army. Operation Winterstorm aimed to create a corridor through the Soviet lines allowing much-needed supplies and reinforcements to reach the trapped German troops in Stalingrad. The plan was a daring one, as it required precise coordination and swift action to avoid the vigilant eyes of the encircling Soviet forces. While Field Marshal Manstein's strategic acumen was evident in the initial stages of the operation, Hitler's interference and indecisiveness played a significant role in its ultimate failure. Manstein had proposed Operation Thunderclap, a breakout plan that involved a more aggressive push to break the encirclement and link up with the 6th Army. This plan was seen as a more viable chance to save the besieged troops. However, Hitler, insisting on holding on to Stalingrad at all costs, vetoed Operation Thunderclap and instead ordered General Friedrich Paulus, commander of the 6th Army, to defend the city until the last man. As a result, the German forces found themselves stretched thin and unable to mount a decisive breakthrough. The Soviets also reacted quickly, reinforcing their encirclement and sealing off any potential escape routes for the German troops. Despite the valiant efforts of the German soldiers and their commanders, the situation inside Stalingrad deteriorated rapidly, with dwindling supplies harsh weather conditions, and fierce Soviet resistance taking a heavy toll on the 6th Army. From December 1942 to January 1943, the state of the German soldiers in Stalingrad was dire and desperate. The Stalingrad encirclement became literally hell on earth. The 6th Army, led by General Friedrich Paulus, was completely surrounded by Soviet forces, and the soldiers endured harsh winter conditions, limited supplies, and constant Soviet attacks. They were effectively cut off from any significant reinforcement or resupply, which led to a severe shortage of food, ammunition, and medical supplies. Adolf Hitler's order to hold Stalingrad at all costs, and his refusal to allow the 6th Army to attempt a breakout, further exacerbated the situation. The soldiers faced not only the enemy's attacks, but also the agony of being trapped in a shrinking pocket with dwindling resources. As the encirclement tightened, the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force tried to supply the besieged troops by airdrops. Hermann Göring, the commander-in-chief of the Luftwaffe, promised that his planes would deliver the necessary supplies to sustain the trapped soldiers. However, the reality of the Luftwaffe's ability to provide adequate airdrops fell far short of the promises. The Luftwaffe faced numerous challenges, including the vast distances they had to cover, the harsh weather conditions, and the constant threat from Soviet anti-aircraft fire and fighter planes. As a result, the supply drops were inconsistent and often inadequate. 
Many of the supplies that did make it to the ground fell into Soviet hands or landed in areas inaccessible to the trapped German forces. The failure of the airdrops to provide sufficient food and medical support resulted in widespread malnutrition and sickness among the German troops. This significantly weakened their ability to resist the relentless Soviet assaults. By January 1943, the situation had become critical. The German soldiers were weakened, exhausted, and suffering from frostbite, hunger, and diseases. The Soviets launched a final massive offensive, and the battle turned into a brutal and savage fight for survival. The German soldiers, already pushed to their limits, fought fiercely in the face of overwhelming odds, but they were simply outnumbered and outmatched. The battle became one of the most ferocious and brutal battles in history. German soldiers had to resort to cannibalism. There was no food. It was beyond terrible. During the last final days of the Battle of Stalingrad in January 1943, a small number of German soldiers managed to escape through the airfields at Gumrak and Potomnik. These airfields were crucial lifelines for the besieged 6th Army, as they were the primary locations for receiving supplies and evacuating wounded soldiers. On January 26, 1943, the Soviet forces launched a massive assault on Gumrak airfield. Despite the relentless Soviet infantry attacks and the intense bombardment, the Germans managed to hold onto the airfield for a few more days. However, the situation became increasingly untenable, as the Soviets kept tightening their grip around the airfield. The scene at Gumrak was straight out of a horror movie, depicting a desperate struggle for survival. Thousands of Axis soldiers frantically rushed toward the final planes, mustering every ounce of strength to escape. But tragically, most of them did not make it. The wounded, left stranded in the unforgiving snow, endured unimaginable suffering as the situation deteriorated with each passing hour. Soldiers were jumping on the wings of the planes for any chance of escape. One German soldier recounted witnessing a comrade succumbing to madness, desperately clawing at the snow with bare hands until his fingers fell off. As another German soldier managed to escape aboard one of the planes, he gazed back at the scene below, and it resembled nothing short of hell. Thousands of men, in a frenzied rush, were converging from all directions toward the airfield. The sight was chaotic and nightmarish, akin to a scene from the depths of hell itself. Airfield became a haunting graveyard, strewn with the bodies of fallen soldiers. Despite the odds stacked against them, small German combat units held their ground at all costs for a few days, attempting to stall the relentless Soviet advancement. For some of the Soviet soldiers, the sight at Gumrak was one of the most horrific experiences they encountered during the entire Battle of Stalingrad. The sheer scale of the devastation and the unimaginable human cost left a profound impact on all who bore witness to this desperate struggle for survival. On January 30, 1943, General Paulus requested permission from Adolf Hitler to attempt a breakout, hoping to escape the encirclement with the remnants of his army. However, Hitler denied the request, and instead ordered Paulus to stand fast and fight to the last man. In the early hours of January 31, 1943, the Soviets finally overran Gumrak airfield. With their last hope of a breakout dashed, the remaining German soldiers at the airfield faced a grim fate. Many were killed in the intense fighting, while others were captured by the advancing Soviet forces. The airfield's fall marked a significant setback for the Germans, as it closed one of their last avenues for resupply and evacuation. As for Potomnik airfield, it met a similar fate. It came under heavy attack from Soviet forces and was also lost on January 31, 1943. The few remaining German troops at Potomnik were left without options, surrounded by overwhelming Soviet forces and with no way to escape. The defense of these airfields was brutal and relentless. The German soldiers stationed there faced overwhelming odds, as they were vastly outnumbered and surrounded by Soviet infantry. The airfields became focal points of intense fighting, with the Soviets launching wave after wave of attacks to break through the German defenses. The German soldiers at the airfields fought valiantly, but they were ultimately overwhelmed by the sheer number of Soviet troops and the intensity of the fighting. The lack of adequate supplies, including food, ammunition, and medical resources further hampered their ability to hold out. The situation in Stalingrad had reached its final point, and the German position was on the brink of complete collapse. 
in a last-ditch effort to bolster the morale of the besieged troops and maintain a sense of honor, Adolf Hitler promoted General Friedrich Paulus to the prestigious rank of Field Marshal. This promotion was intended to remind Paulus that no German commander of such high rank had ever surrendered in the face of defeat. However, Paulus's response to his promotion revealed his resolve and defiance of Hitler's expectations. He reportedly gathered his generals and uttered the now famous words, I have no intention of shooting myself for this bohemian corporal. This blunt statement reflected Paulus's disillusionment with Hitler's leadership and the increasingly dire situation in Stalingrad. It also underscored his refusal to meet the expected fate of surrender in the face of overwhelming odds. The following day, January 31, 1943, with the city in ruins, supplies depleted, and his troops weakened by hunger, cold, and relentless Soviet attacks, General Paulus made a momentous decision. Defying Hitler's orders to fight to the last man and rejecting the promotion to field marshal, he chose to surrender the remnants of the 6th Army to the Soviet forces. Paulus's decision to surrender was not just an act of practicality, but also a testament to his sense of duty towards his men. He recognized that further resistance was futile and that continuing the fight would only lead to more unnecessary loss of lives. His surrender marked a significant turning point in the Battle of Stalingrad, as it symbolized the first major defeat for the German military on the Eastern Front. By choosing to surrender, Paulus and the surviving German soldiers endured the hardships of captivity as prisoners of war. His decision sparked anger and disappointment in Nazi Germany, as Hitler saw it as an act of betrayal. Nonetheless, Paulus's choice to avoid an unnecessary and futile last stand demonstrated his pragmatism and compassion for his soldiers. And that brings our video to a close. In this documentary, we've delved into the harrowing history of the Battle of Stalingrad, the most brutal battle in recorded history. The unyielding determination and sacrifices made during this epic struggle left an indelible mark on the course of the war and the lives of those involved. From the early sparks of conflict to the desperate moments at Gumrak and Potomnik airfields, we've witnessed the bravery and resilience displayed amidst unimaginable challenges by the Soviets and Germans. Stalingrad became a crucible of suffering and valor, where soldiers fought fiercely for survival. Through the eyes of those who endured it, we've seen the relentless urban warfare, the freezing cold, the hunger, and the devastating losses on both sides. The battle's outcome shifted the momentum in favor of the Soviet forces, altering the course of the war. The Battle of Stalingrad teaches us profound lessons about the consequences of war, strategic decision-making, and the enduring strength of the human spirit. It serves as a stark reminder of the horrors of conflict and the importance of striving for peace. As we honor the courage of soldiers and civilians, let us learn from history's darkest chapters and strive to build a future where war's horrors are left behind. May the memory of Stalingrad inspire us to seek a world where compassion and understanding prevail. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey today. Thank you to all of our viewers and patrons. Without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. We will see you guys on our next episode. See you soon.